All righty. My name is Mike Ramsdale. I am a filmmaker and a photographer. And I am here to discuss with you the idea that reality is simply story realized. Reality is simply story realized. And what does that mean? That means to me that the physical plane that we participate in on a day-to-day -day basis is nothing more than the event horizon and the physical manifestation of the stories individually and collectively that we subscribe to. So the extrapolation or progression of that thought is that if we want to change reality, we must first change the story. If we continue to tell each other stories of us and them, right and wrong, good and evil, we are going to continue to live in a world of us and them, right and wrong, good and evil. But what if, what if instead we decided to tell each other stories that unite, that empower, that engage? What would that world look like? That was the question I had when I started my production company, Under the Hood Productions. That's the question I have every time I take on a new project. My new project takes place in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And that is absolutely a story worth engaging in. When you're introduced to the story of Congo, you're usually introduced to it in this very specific way. In the last 15 years in Congo, almost 6 million people have been killed. Hundreds of thousands of women have been systematically and brutally raped. Millions more displaced. It is quite simply the worst human atrocity to take place on planet Earth since World War II. Now, without a show of hands, how many people upon hearing that said to themselves, as soon as this dude's done talking, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to go do something for Congo. That's it. I'm motivated. I'm engaged. I'm gone. If we're honest, and I'm honest with you, probably not very many. I certainly didn't. That's not enough to get me engaged. Why is that? Is it because I'm apathetic? Is it because I'm a bad person? Is it because you're apathetic? No. No, 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 and no. It's the opposite. We're incredibly empathetic creatures. And to connect to a story, we need an empathetic connection. And if you try empathetically to connect to those statistics, you will explode on impact. It's more than we can psychologically handle. So the part of our brain that is responsible for our survival tells the other, brain, the other part of our brain to abort. Stay back. Don't go there. And tell me if this sounds familiar. You start saying things to yourself like, it's Africa. There's genocides and civil war and famine and AIDS, and it's horrible, but it happened. And there's powers far bigger than you with much more, much more money and much more time doing everything they can. And if they can't do anything, then how could I? That's the story we begin to tell ourselves. Congo is a tragedy. I hate it, but there's nothing I can do about it. Boom. That's the story. That's the reality. So. As a filmmaker, as a storyteller who wants people to engage, the question is, well, then how do I have to tell the story to do that? What must I give you to allow you to engage in such a story? The first thing I have to give you is an understanding, both an emotional and an intellectual understanding. An emotional understanding for that empathetic connection to happen, and an intellectual understanding for that survival mechanism to understand. I make feature films. Uh, I can't show a feature film in 18 minutes. But any time I start making a film, I make what's called a teaser just to let my audience, my investors, my followers know this is the project that I'm going to begin on. Give them an intellectual place to connect to the story that I'm about ready to tell. This is called Unaware. Conflict Minerals Project, Webisode 1, Unaware. Action! How could we not know? Busy, busy, busy. Everybody's so busy. But how could we not know? 5.4 million people dead. Congo. I'm not familiar with the Congo whatsoever. There's a lot of conflict there, I think. What's worse is we don't even know we're financing it. Cell phones, cell phones, cell phones. All cell phones have tungsten, tin, tantalum, and gold. Conflict minerals. Where are they mined? Who owns the mines? We buy the phones, they buy the guns. $183 million worth a year. And corporations profit billions. Um, I've, I've heard something about it, but I'm not sure which mineral. Blood diamonds, but not conflict minerals. No, I'm not familiar with that. We said never again, didn't we? The Holocaust? But has happened again, and again, and again, and again. 
it's happening again in Congo. Right now, millions dying. What do we do? So how many people here before this have heard of conflict minerals? A few. That's good. That's good. The word's getting out. Conflict minerals is obviously not the only story of Congo. If I could tell you the only story of Congo in 90 seconds, then it wouldn't be the worst human atrocity on planet Earth. But it's a very important story for exactly the reason that the film talks about, the teaser talks about. Because the, because the rogue militias and the foreign military uh, uh, leaders are coming in and they're stealing and they're taking control of the mines and through that taking control of the mines, they're raping and pillaging and enslaving and killing. That gives us an intellectual connection to the topic in Congo. So now when I say, hey, have you heard of the topic of Congo? Have you heard of the situation in Congo? You say, yeah, that's the situation with conflict minerals. But more than it gives you an intellectual understanding, it gives you a physical connection because we carry this shit around in our pockets every day. The very cameras that this film is being made on is full of them. The plane I rode here on, full of them. But so an intellectual connection, an intellectual understanding is not enough. Next, we need an emotional understanding. Because that's what we are. We're empathetic creatures, and we need a place to emotionally empathize. Five and a half million dead people is a statistic. One is a tragedy. And nobody knows that more, usually, than the one. And on my first trip to Congo in 2009 with an anti-genocide organization called Jewish World Watch, great organization, uh, we met a young woman who asked us to tell us her story. She said, I'd like to tell you my story so that you will take my story and tell it to others. Because she knew that deep in the bush of Congo, without a penny to her name, and nothing but tragedy around her, the only thing she had for herself, for her people, for her country, was her story. She had the belief in the empathetic connection. Her name is Renee, and this is, uh, this is her story. Upande ni kaona pale kumulangu kukasimama sodao murefu. Anabeba masasi huku kumukongo na ingina na vala umu inamuzunguruka. Haka kama taarme yake, haka ionesha hivi inche. Hivi uwe ananyonesha na nyapare. Huku yulu anavala teni. Chini anavala teni sivile. Haka ingia mulo munumba mwenye ni ni. Nilikuwaka, akanza nipiganisha se nikuwe bibi yake. Kisha nikapanda muhewa, haka kakanzia chini, haka nitia chini. Mutoto muloko, haka ukia nansa tambala sea kuye kule kwenye niko. Baati, haka kamata mutoto, haka taka mutuanga kukibambazi. Kama mungu haka katala, haka mutupa kukitata. Akaingia kumulangu, akakuta mulangu balifunga. Akaleta alijiwe, akaponda mulangu. Nini kakia na batoto mbi. Kufika pale kumulangu, uwa mkuwa kaniponyoka. Renee asked to share her story in hopes that we would help rewrite a new story for Congo. So now we have an emotional understanding. Now when we think about Congo, when we think of five and a half million dead, in 90 seconds you heard this one woman's story and I promise you it won't leave. You saw her face, you saw her pain, you, you heard her voice, you saw her actions, she became a human being. So now, and this is how powerful, this is how beautiful we are as creatures, we have that intellectual understanding, we have that emotional that emotional connection. 
And what's the next thing that happened? That empathetic drive says, Mike, I want to engage. How do I engage? There's three ways to help people engage, three ways to motivate engagement. The first is fear, but fear divides us. The second is guilt, but guilt disempowers us. And the third is hope. Hope. It's the most powerful because it empowers us. It empowers us collectively. It empowers us individually. So is there hope for Congo? Absolutely there's hope for Congo. If you follow through my uh, photographic essays, if you ever see one of my photographic essays on Congo, you'll come across first this slide. Hope. If money is how war is fueled, hope is how war is endured. The people of Congo have not given up hope. They have hope in their future. They have hope in their connections. They have hope in their faith, and my favorite, they have hope in their future generations. But what else? What else? But we must address our own role in this conflict. As consumers of these minerals and products, we have the power to pressure the electronic companies and demand that they create a method of supply chain accountability to ensure that all products are conflict-free. Such, such consumer demands brought down apartheid, they changed the mining policies of blood diamonds, and they ended the Jim Crow laws in the American South. Proof of concept that there is hope, that enough people decide to rewrite the story, then we can help rewrite the reality in Congo. It's historical. I could take that into investors and bank on it. It's return on investment. That's what we have to do, is rewrite the story. But here's the next step, the empathetic connection. What does it do now? It must have action. That's where the rubber meets the road. To be intellectually and emotionally engaged is great, but now we must take action. And so if you're saying to me now, Mike, I'm inspired, I want to engage, what can I do? I'm glad you asked. Because there's an NGO push right now, Global Witness, The Enough Project, Jewish World Watch, all of them working very hard on the conflict mineral policies. They need our grassroots support though. They were able to get in the Dodd-Frank bill, section 1502 passed. Section 1502 states, paraphrase, that any corporation sourcing minerals from the DRC must publicly publish the, mine, the minerals that come from certified mines and the minerals that come from uncertified. Uncertified implying and probably being conflict minerals. It's not enough, there is much more to be done, but at least puts them on public record to say, hey, Mr. Computer Company, hey, Mr. Cell Phone Maker, you got 40% of your minerals from uncertified mines in Congo. That's unacceptable. But guess what happened? The Chamber of Commerce, that big building across the street from the White House, that is not a governmental building, that is funded by all the corporations making billions of dollars off of this, told the SEC that when you go to enact that bill, we're going to sue you. We're going to sue you to keep that bill out of, out, out of law. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me that that is the story that they're trying to write? That after hearing a story like Renee's, after five and a half million people dead, we can't even get that passed? That's the story that people are telling us is going to be our reality? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. So I ask you, I beg you, go to the Enough Project's webpage. They have a whole thing for Step Up for 1502. And when we're done with 1502, get involved in another way. Do something else, whatever it is. We can protest corporations. We can, there's all kinds of actions out there to be taken as long as we decide to engage and rewrite the story of Congo. Help rewrite the reality of Congo. And it is more than that, though. It is more than that. It is more than Rene. It is more than 1502. It is more than, than Congo itself. If we continue to passively accept the stories of divisionary thinking, of us and them, of disempowerment, then that is the world we're going to continue to live in. Period. Period. But the thing is that nobody wants you to know is that we are all the storytellers that each and every one of us is a storyteller. And if we decide at any moment to change our story to ones of active engagement, of ones of unity, of ones of empowerment, then imagine what that reality would look like. That, to me, is the story worth telling. That, to me, is the reality worth living. It is quite simply the story, the greatest story ever told, the story of the infinite potential of the human species. I would love to see that story come to reality. It's a story worth sharing. It's an idea worth sharing. It's a reality worth living. Thank you very much.